warning. I am not an expert in any of the subjects this channel covers, though I do endeavour to be as accurate as possible. I always research the topics I talk about before making a video, though it's entirely possible that the sources I have consulted are inaccurate or wrong. In the event that this happens, I will always acknowledge my mistakes in the comment section of a video. In the serene waters of the Pacific sits an island with perfect sandy white beaches and beautiful weather. It's a paradise for tourists. It's also under threat by North Korean forces. I am, of course, talking about Guam. But how are North Korea intending to destroy Guam? And more importantly, why Guam at all? As a matter of fact, North Korea has had their eyes on Guam for a long time. For a tiny island that's around 2,100 miles away from the North Korean peninsula, a lot of people don't really understand why that is. In truth, Guam is a heavily fortified island of high strategic significance. While it's only 30 miles long, the island is actually home to thousands of American troops. The island was taken from the Spanish in 1898 as a fueling station for the US fleet, but it quickly transformed from a simple fueling depot into a key station for international communication and transportation. The island played a highly important role in several wars. During the Second World War, it was taken by the Japanese swiftly after the Pearl Harbor attacks, before being taken back by the US in 1944. In the Cold War, the island became something of a support center the Vietnam War saw it become a home for thousands of soldiers for the first time. After the Cold War came to a close, the military started to tone down the operations at Guam, but that only lasted until the year 2000. Military leaders at this point had re-evaluated their need to keep forces close to Asia and began to restock the island. Now, the island is a hive of activity with a strong presence of bombers. There is an anti-missile battery focused near exclusively on North Korea. It is an island used for war games and joint exercises, and also a massive weapon storage facility. In fact, the number of weapons on Guam far outnumber that of any other single place on the planet. North Korea considers it an island specifically with the purpose of invading their sovereignty. But Guam is not as worried as you think they would be. The governor of the island, Eddie Baza Calvo, believes there is no threat whatsoever. That's not as surprising as it first sounds. The idea of being attacked by North Korea isn't exactly new. In fact, it's a threat that has been hung over the head of the island since 2004. At this time, North Korea didn't even have missiles that could reach the US mainland, but South Korean papers had started reporting that Pyongyang had the ability to strike the island with ease. In 2013, Pyongyang reminded the US that it should not forget that the Anderson Air Force Base was in their sights. This threat isn't exactly a new thing, but with Trump shooting back inflammatory words of war, we have to ask, how exactly do North Korea propose to reduce Guam to cinder this time? According to North Korea, they will be firing the Hwasong-12 rockets across Japan. They will fly over Shimani, Hiroshima and Koichi before flying the rest of the 3,356 km journey to, eventually, impact the waters just 30 to 40 km shy of Guam. It's a power play to make the people of America feel uneasy which has already worked pretty well. The Hwasong-12. It's a missile that was first revealed to the world in a military parade on the 14th of April 2017 during the Day of the Sun, the birthday anniversary for North Korea's founding president. Based on photographs, the Hwasong-12 is thought to be a single-stage rocket using a single main engine and four vernier thrusters. It's estimated that the missile has a range of between 3,700 kilometers and 6,000 kilometers. In other words, it could be deployed basically anywhere, if it were reliable. The first three tests of the rocket system failed, the first pinwheeling, the second exploding within 5 seconds of launch, and the third flying 25 miles, before exploding. The fourth test on the 14th of May was a complete success, flying a total of over 2,000 kilometers before landing in the Sea of Japan. This sudden increase in North Korea's ballistic prominence is something that has to be looked at in detail. It has been claimed that they've had outside help, outside help that has been traced back to the Ukraine and Russia. A report released on Monday by the International Institute for Strategic Studies stated that North Korea couldn't have made such strides in their missile development without some form of liquid propellant agent from a foreign source. It's not likely that the Russian engineers have worked directly on North Korea's missiles, but instead they were sold experience and some Soviet RD-250 missiles from Russia's Energomash or Ukraine's KB Yaznoye. The report believes that the missiles were most likely from the Dnipro factory in Ukraine. Back in 2011, the North Koreans were actually caught trying to steal missile secrets from this factory, and it might turn out that they've now got exactly what they wanted. While North Korea are gearing up their ballistic attack properties, North America are gearing up their defense. 
North America actually has multiple forms of missile defense. The Patriot first gained popularity when it succeeded against Iraq's Scud missiles during the Gulf War. It's useful against conventional weapons intercepting missiles at a top range of 12 miles in the low atmosphere on their final approach toward a target. It's useless against nuclear missiles, however, as they usually have multiple warheads and decoys, which is just too much for the Patriot to deal with. The third, Lockheed's Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, is made to shoot down short-range or medium-range ballistic missiles. It can intercept missiles at a max range of 124 miles, either in the atmosphere of Earth or outside it. Third is currently deployed at Guam, Alaska, and South Korea, and it has a perfect 14 out of 14 record in tests since 2005. Next comes Aegis. It's a ship-based missile counter system that can protect against short-range ballistic missiles mid-flight or in its final stages. It also has a long-range radar that can be used in conjunction with the Patriot or Thard to increase their accuracy. But Aegis isn't just a defender, it's an assaulter as well, which can hit land-based targets, subs, and surface ships. Currently, there are 84 Navy ships that have Aegis installed. Boeing have also supplied a ground-based mid-course defense system that can intercept ballistic missiles. Unfortunately, their entry into the field is unsteady at best. In May, the anti-missile system successfully intercepted a target filed from the Marshall Islands, but other attempts have failed in the past, even though they were scripted with the dimensions, trajectory, and speed as known factors, things you wouldn't even have in the real world. There's yet another form of anti-missile defense system that is known as the boost phase. These are defense styles that don't even give the missile a chance to get going and shoot them down when the missile is first boosting off so that no countermeasures can be deployed. Laura Grigo, a scientist at the Union of Concerned Scientists, has said that the Air Force once considered a laser that was mounted in a Boeing 747, but this plan was scrapped for how expensive it was. Apparently, drones could do the same job, but the tech isn't quite ready yet. North Korea are being aggressive. America, or rather Trump, is also being aggressive. But countermeasures are in place, and there are many of them. So, even if missiles do get fired, Guam is probably going to be pretty safe.